All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so in this video, I want to give you three examples of three different people teaching this idea that there will be sex after the return of Jesus. All right, and they base this doctrine on their own lust, and the Bible warns us that this is going to happen and that this is happening right now. All right, and I want to show all that for you. I want to make it easy to see. So I want to shine some light on it so you can see it for yourself and make it easy to understand what the error is. And of course, I want to show you what the truth of it is. So let's just go with example number one. Deadly snakes will not strike. All right, and this is Greg Moffat. Okay. Number nine. Tribulation period survivors will live to extended lives. So the, the creation is restored. Uh, so the environment is healthy. Um, Jesus is around answering prayer, including healing. People are living predominantly moral lives under his leadership. Um, people in their normal bodies are going to live a long time. Some believe that believers in the new kingdom will, nev will not die. Uh, others believe that they will die, but, but they will not die for a long time. Isaiah 65 says that someone dies at the age of 100, it will be as if that person died as a child. Um, similarly, Zechariah says that Jerusalem will feature old men and old women who are of great age. Many think that lifespan in the Millennial Kingdom will be very similar to lifespan pre-flood. So, long time. Remember that. Because I'm, I'm going to show you another example of this. Now, these people are teaching this idea that we're going to go back to the way it was before the flood in the days of Noah. Um, number 10, the tribulation period survivors are going to repopulate the earth. Isaiah 65 says... All right, so he, there, there it is. The tribulation survivors, what he really means is those that survived the wrath of God. All right, never mind his ignorance, but that's what he means. The people that live after the return of Jesus, okay? They're going to repopulate the earth. That means they're going to have sex. All right? And you heard what he said just before that, that people are going to be living much longer. And he even suggested some people believe that they will live forever, having sexual relations forever. Now this is what I mean, that these people are teaching doctrines of lust. Okay? Now that's one example. Now let me go back to um, the comment. I made a, the, the video yesterday on this, but let me just read it. This is from Talmadge Miller, Jr., 6430. He said in uh, the comment section, yes, when Jesus returns to earth, all who have died in Christ will return to earth with him. We will rule and reign under his authority. There will still be millions of people on the earth who haven't survived through the tribulation. And they, have, and they will have children and descendants as well. They're going to continue to have sex after Jesus returns. Right? And he loves that idea, right? The world will still continue, but the nature of all things will change. Men will live hundreds of years again, as God allowed during the Genesis period, and men will continue to multiply on the earth. Um, so, you know, in the video I did yesterday, I just showed, hey, this is what they're putting their hope into, this is what they're preaching. They want to go back to a time when it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, good-looking women. And so they took them wives of all which they chose. So this is what they're preaching. They want to go back to this time here, where they had multiple wives. You know, if I didn't know better, I think these guys were all Mormons. Really? Isn't that what they're teaching? They're teaching that paradise 
is having wives of all which they chose. They believe Jesus is going to come back and then they will be able to have wives of all which they choose. Right? And that's that's what Mormonism teaches. And that they will repopulate the earth. That's what Mormonism teaches. It's interesting to me. I know these guys will claim not to be Mormons, but they're, it's like they're blending Mormonism in with their doctrine. And um, uh, quite frankly, I don't see how any of them are saved. All right, let's go to example number three. Again, I ask a different person, and this, this time I ask Bible up to you. Will people still be having children after the return of Jesus Christ? And Bible up to you says, I believe so. But without the pain of childbirth. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't have the pain of childbirth because that kind of gives yourself away a little bit, doesn't it? Or is it just that I mean, what is it? What are you saying here, man? There's just gonna be sex, but People are the spirit babies. Is that what it is? Because that's what Mormonism teaches, isn't it? Spirit babies. I believe so, but without the pain of childbirth, without the pain of childbirth. See, that would that would sync up pretty good with Mormonism's teaching that women will have their own planet and that they will have spirit babies. Isn't that's interesting? Okay. Also, people will live. A much longer life, Isaiah 65, verse 20. No longer will there be an infant of days, neither an old man who has not filled his days. For the child shall die, <laughs> for the child shall die in hundred years old, and the sinner being a hundred years old will be accursed. I'm I'm not sure what no what in the world oh he's he's quoting a corrupt Bible here I don't know what he's saying here for there shall be no more thence an infant of days nor an old man that has not filled his days for the child shall die in hundred years old but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed this is the life to come and this is the life right now where we are born of the Spirit of God. We are born of the Spirit of God, so we are the, the children of God right now. Even though, even if we're a hundred years old, we're a child of God. But the sinner that's a hundred years old, he's accursed. He's cursed because he does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the life to come, there will be no more an infinite days, nor an old man that has not yet filled his days. We have eternal life. Okay, I don't know what in the world these guys are teaching. I really don't. All right. The one that fails to reach a hundred will be considered a curse. Okay, so it's, it's just mind blowing to me. How do you go? How do you take that verse and twist it and turn it around into this idea? Hey, after the end of the world, we're going to be having sex for hundreds of years. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Man, you could have pulled any verse out of the Bible and then came to that same conclusion. Uh, the there's just no more uh, there's just no um, no thought being put into this stuff all these guys are doing they're echoing the, each other Isaiah 65 Isaiah 65 Does this guy say Isaiah 65 uh, well he probably does on his video but it's interesting that they're not going by what the Bible says. They're just echoing what they heard another man say. Let's see. Let's just go one verse here. 
For in the resurrection they will neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. All right, in the resurrection. All right, so you know the resurrection is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There should be no doubt about it. All right, so Jesus is asked, What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And he says, He will come in the clouds of heaven, and his angels shall gather together his elect. It's the resurrection. All right, that's the resurrection. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of heaven. Okay, in the resurrection. All right, so let's get another example here. In the resurrection. All right, First Thessalonians 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead, and Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is the resurrection. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. We are resurrected. Right? We can even go back to Daniel chapter 12 real quickly. Okay? Just take one second. Verse 2. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is the resurrection that happens at the last day. All right. Even Jesus says, John chapter 6, And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all of which has, he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. The resurrection at the last day. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the last day, and it is the day we are resurrected. All right. And this is the will of him that, had, that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Again, same thing. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. The resurrection happens at the last day when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven right and he shall gather together his elect that's the last day that's the resurrection and Jesus says in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given a marriage but are as the angels of God right in the resurrection neither marry nor are given a marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven in the resurrection in 1st Corinthians 15 1 Corinthians 15, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward they that are Christ, that is coming. So nobody has been resurrected, not until he comes in the clouds of heaven. Right? Then comes the end. Right? When he, when, oh, I'm sorry, let me go back. Uh, let me go back. Uh, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Every man in his own order. So nobody's been resurrected yet. Only Jesus. He has led the way for us. He has done it all for us. And he has ascended to heaven. And he's promised to return for us. He says in John chapter 14, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. All right. So at the last day, He's going to come, you know, that's when he comes back. That's the last day. And when he comes back, we are resurrected. We are lifted up in the air. All right. And so, in the resurrection, that's the resurrection. Afterwards, they neither marry nor are given a marriage. That means there's no more sex. And, it, <laughs> and the life to come hereafter is much, much better than your sexual fantasies. I know, I get it, man. Your sexual fantasies are hot dogs, right? I mean, you just hot diggity dogs. But there is not going to be 
repopulation after Jesus comes. Because right, what you're talking about is not just sex, but you're also talking about death, pain, sorrow, and suffering. You're essentially saying that Jesus is going to return for no reason at all, and nothing's going to happen. I mean, you're trying to say, well, what's going to happen is we're going to live longer. And we're still going to be in absolute misery with childbearing, with uh, you know, adultery, with sin. With death and all that. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. If all of that is eliminated, if all the sin and death is eliminated, then why would it only be for a short time? Why would it not be forever? And of course, that's what I'm putting my hope into is eternal life, not an extended period of time. And now consider 1 John chapter 2. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away. Hey, let me start here, verse 15. I'm sorry about this. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The world passes away, and the lust thereof. Right? The world passes away, and the lust thereof. When does the world pass away? It passes away when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Right? Remember what it says in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when it says, The sun shall be dark, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. That's the world passing away. Here in 2 Peter chapter 3, The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away. The world shall pass away. And the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. And the which the heaven shall pass away with it, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The world passes away in the lust thereof. When? The day of the Lord. When the, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. So what in the world are these guys teaching? All right, so uh, somebody uh, a while back said, well, people aren't teaching this idea that there's going to be sex. You know, they, they ain't teaching sex, sex, sex. Well, yeah, they are. Their whole doctrine is based on sex. This whole idea of an extended period of time is all solely based on sex. Now, when they say repopulate, when they say having children, what they really mean is dirty, stinky, filthy sex. That's what they're putting their hope into, and this is exactly what we're warned of. All right, let's go back to Second Peter chapter three. Knowing this first, now, it, now this is interesting because in Matthew twenty-four, when the disciples came to Jesus and asked him privately, saying, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The very first thing that Jesus says is, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. The very first warning is deceivers. Second Peter chapter 3, Knowing this first, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers, walking after their own lust. See, they're dirty, stinky, filthy lust. All right, and Jude, how that they told you there should come in the last time mockers walking after their own ungodly lust. Where are we at here? I don't know where it's at. I thought it was in here. Maybe not. I must be mistaken. Maybe I dreamt it or something. I'm not sure. 
Look at the filthy dreamers define like filthy dreamers. Somehow you got a problem with the way I word things. The same way I word things are, is what is in the Bible here. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. And that, that, that's exactly what we're seeing. These people are teaching this idea. Now they're using softer words, aren't they? They're, <laughs> they're using, you know, words that are going to deceive people. They're not going to use harsh, hard words like I do. Because they want to deceive people. They are deceived themselves. And so in like manner, they deceive others. Right? So, uh, anyways, uh, it, it, it's just incredible to me how blatant it's becoming and how blind so many people are. I mean, this is right here in front of our face. Preacher after preacher after preacher. Just because they mix up their words and, and speak kindly, I mean, it, that's all it takes to deceive people. It's incredible. It's incredible how easy it is to deceive people. But when you think about what it is that they're teaching, they're teaching filthiness. It's disgusting. This idea that they're going to go back to the pre-flood days where they were able to take wives of all which they chose. And this is exactly what they're all teaching. It's all based on dirty, stinky, filthy sex.